Um, I don't even know what episode it is. I think it's episode 57. Is it episode 57? Dude, this podcast getting old, bro. Careful. Did you guys see this? Did you guys see this? Did you guys see this? <laughs> Did you guys see the last no effect show? Did you see what happened? Okay. First of all, okay, I should probably intro. What's up, guys? It's Lisa Foyles. This is Temperamental. Um, episode 57, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's episode 57, but welcome, guys. It's Halloween season. It's October. We got spooky stuff here on the set, and you're only going to see that if you're a visual, if you're a, an eye an eye watcher, right? You're not just like an ear listener. If you're watching it on YouTube or on Spotify, you're going to see with your eyes what the set looks like. Um, and uh, whoa, I just elbowed my cat in the head. I'm really sorry about that. That was an accident. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, first, before I get into the... Can you guys be cool? Please, cats. Uh, before I get into the whole... Um, did you see this? Did you see this? Before I get into that, uh, I just wanted to announce that we're back at the Punk Rock Museum. Um, the, my band's residency starts tonight. Um, do we know the songs? I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> we have like a whole new set with a bunch of like spooky Halloween songs. Uh, we rehearsed one time. It's probably fine. It's going to be great. Uh, but anyway, um, come to Vegas, come to the Punk Rock Museum on a Tuesday. Come see us, the chaos that we bring. Yo, I dress like a skeleton. I'm super fun. I get everybody dancing. We do shots. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to get lit. It's so good. Okay. Anyway, did you see this? Did you see this? <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Punk Rock Museum is obviously very special to me. It was own, it's owned and it was started by a man by the name of Fat Mike. And I've told my children, first of all, I can't call people fat unless you're referring to Fat Mike. He's the only person that you can call fat because it's his name. And this has confused my children because they're like, okay, um, but we shouldn't call people fat. I'm like, that's right. And he's like, but we, but the, and they're like, but we can call Fat Mike fat. And I'm like, yes. They're like, okay, we don't understand because we're five and seven. And I'm like, eat your cereal and get your backpack and get in the car. We're going to school. I don't have time for these questions right now. <laughs> don't call people fat, but you can call Fat Mike fat because we're his name. Okay, how hard is this? Um, so my kids know Fat Mike. I know Fat Mike. He's, he's great. He's super cool, amazing dude. So talented. So um, intelligent, right? Like I had a whole conversation with him about Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Right? You're like, you don't think you're going to like have a chat with an old punk rocker, um, just a legend in music about Gone with the Wind. I never go hungry again, but it did. And he, he had like such good insight on it. Uh, but anyway, so No Effects is his band. And if you're, first of all, keep listening. Okay. Don't be that, don't do that thing where you're like, I was just going to talk about punk rock and I don't even know punk rocks. So I'm just going to fast forward. Don't fast forward. Cause what I'm going to tell you is so effing funny that you're going to want to hear all of it. Um, okay. So, uh, fat Mike, who you're allowed to call fat is, uh, in a band called no effects, very legendary band started in LA. They've been around for like four decades. They are on their final tour they are on their goodbye tour yo they're done they are done and they've made it very clear that they're not doing the the motley crew thing they're not doing the black sabbath thing. they're not doing the share thing where they're just gonna say goodbye for 10 years and keep raking in that money keep getting those barrels back up the truck yo <laughs> we're doing another goodbye tour hey when the money runs out let's do a goodbye tour that's their mentality i'm not into it okay i'm not into it Dude, Nikki Six has died twice. Hey, when your bassist dies twice, don't keep doing goodbye tours. That loud thumping is, yes, we all know what's happening. It's Kevin. He's taking a dump. He's taking a big dump. I guess maybe after all of these episodes and Kevin pooping in the middle of so many episodes, I would think to myself, maybe I should move the litter box so it's not so close to the microphones while I'm filming. That's what an intelligent person would ask themselves. Um, but I'm not an intelligent person. 
And I'm just going to keep it right where it is. You good? Everything uh, come out okay, Kev? Kevin? All right. So anyway, so Nikki Six has died twice. <laughs> Do you not know this story? So the first time, okay, so first of all, Motley Crue, everybody knows Motley Crue, their bassist, he's a bassist, right? Yeah, Nikki Six. Um, so he's, he likes to do hard drugs. <laughs> and the first time that he died, uh, I think it was like 70s or 80s. Um, the st- here's how the story goes. And I'm not, sh- I have not fact checked this. And it could be one of those urban legends in music. I'm not sure, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway, because I find it insane. So the story goes that Nikki Six was doing so many drugs that he um, passed out and his heart stopped beating, which is not ideal. And his drug dealer was um, so concerned that he had killed Nikki Six that he started hitting him with a baseball bat. (laughs) Interesting thought process. Oh my God, my client is dead. What should I do? Hey, hand me the Louisville slugger. Let's just take a couple whacks at him. See if he just sits straight up. Yeah. Oh my God, thanks. That wooden bat really just uh, got the ticker going. No, don't hit your dead friends with bats. First of all, you come to this podcast for words of wisdom. That's today's words of wisdom. Don't hit your dead friends with bats. Just as a general rule. So anyway, the drug dealer's hitting Nikki Six with a bat. Um, Nikki Six is not popping popping up. And so he puts him in a dumpster. This is some drug dealer logic happening right here. Oh my God, the Louisville slugger did nothing. What are we going to do with this body? Oh, I got to make my next drug dealing appointment in like 20 minutes. Let's just put him in the dumpster and skedaddle. I think drug dealers probably use the word skedaddle. Uh, So yeah, they dump him in a a dumpster. Uh, And then he wakes up in the dumpster. Oh. I'm alive. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to join the church body and I'm going to go on missionary trips and be a good person because I died once. No, (laughs) not what happened. He continued to be a rock star and he continued to do hard drugs. And then fast forward to like, I think it was like 87. Dude dies again. (laughs) Dude, it's like drinking heroin from a fire hose and surprise, surprise, passes out again. And his ticker's like, I'm done, yo. I'm done. You can't keep doing this to me. Uh, the, I can't work these hours. His heart is like, absolutely fucking not. I'm out. I'm done. No Louisville slugger's going to get me to start taking again. I am out. And his heart's like, I'm done. And then he's like... <laughs> And then he wakes up again. (gasps) I'm alive. Thank God. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to join the church body and go on missionary trips and and be a good person from here on out. I'm going to work at a soup kitchen and adopt some orphans. No. (laughs) I'm going to do hard drugs. (laughs) yeah um so instead of here's okay so then you have the band right you have the rest of the band and they what they here's what they should have done they should have gone to nicky and be like yo nick um we don't think that you should be in this band anymore and we don't think you should do any more hard drugs and we don't think that this whole lifestyle is suiting you very well because of the fact that you died twice so we're gonna respectfully kick you out of the band so that you can go forth and live a normal life and be a good person no (laughs) that's not what they did they're like let's write a hit song about it and that's when they wrote, kick, stop my heart, hope it never stops. Ow! Oh, yeah! And they wrote a song about kickstarting your heart after you die twice. <laughs> and it's a great song. That's the most upsetting part, is that it's a really good song. It's a great song. Maybe one of their best. Um, 
what was I talking about? Yeah. So anyway, um, not only have they said that they're going to be done so many times and then not been done and then continuing to do tours, they just announced a residency here in Vegas. So I'm probably going to go see them next year. <laughs> I'm probably going to go see them next year. Um, I think it, here in Vegas, if we were smart as a city, we'd start like, uh, place your bets. Is Nikki Six going to die for a third time during this residency? <laughs> like, we can bet on anything here in Vegas. Like, come on, let's just, let's make it a thing. So anyway, no effects, back to no effects. No effects is like, we ain't doing that. We're not going to do that. We're going to go out with a bang and we're going to just say goodbye to our fans and move on with our, with the next stage of our lives. Will he keep the name Fat Mike when he just enters society as a normal human being? I don't know. I hope so. Because my kids are already going to call him Fat Mike. We've already established that's okay. Um, so uh, here's what they did. Here's what, here's what Mike did. Fat Mike. He was like, for the last song of the last show in L.A., first of all, they rented out a pier. <laughs> Why not? Let's rent out a pier. Um, they rent out a pier. They built a stage. Uh, the festival is called it the, uh, Punk in Drublet. Punk in Drublet, which is super funny. I'm not as thick as you drunk I am. I've had too. I've had too many martinis. You know, it's one of those. I like that. Um, I like that. So anyway, they rent out a pier, and they're like, "Let's get for the very last song. We're gonna play a song called The Decline, which is like a 15 minute rock opera type of epic song." Very appropriate for it to be the the last song in this very emotional tour. It's such a special moment. They're going to play the decline. That's going to be the end of no effects. That's great. And they're like, we're going to make it even better. We're going to invite all of our punk rock friends, all of our musicians, friends, and celebrities to come on stage with their own amp and their own guitar. And we're all going to play together. And you're like, wow, that's going to sound like sh um, but it doesn't matter, right? It's all about the moment. Um, and the funniest part is that they all had th this, ha dude, this happened, right? Like I remember Mike talking about wanting to do this and then seeing it on the live stream, be like, oh my gosh, he's doing it. Like, look at all of these people on stage. Let me just read some of the names. Just stay with me. Stop. If you're like, I don't know punk rock. I don't know what she's saying. I'm not going to know any of these people. Just stop because I'm going to get to the funny part. So just stay with me. But for the people who do care, um, you had like Jay Bentley from Bad Religion, uh, Greg Hedson. You had Mike Carrera from MXPX, um, JR from Lesson Jake, uh, Jordan Burns from Strong Out, uh, Fletcher from Pennywise, um, and Shifty, Shiflet, uh, Chris Shiflet from Foo Fighters. And somebody else um, saw Josh Freeze from the Vandals and the Foo Fighters, who I actually stood on stage next to when I went to the last UK NoFX show in London, which was awesome. I stood on the stage. It was great. So, <laughs> so everybody's up on stage. And uh, hold on, this Rolling Stone article was, it says it perfectly. So I'm just going to read a little, because this, this is a big moment in music, honestly. Like, this is a his historic moment. So even if you're like, I don't even like punk rock, just shut up. Just listen for a second. Um, more than four decades after forming in Los Angeles, uh, NoFX played their final concerts. The group's last ever concert on Sunday included guest appearances by Rancid's Tim Armstrong, Bad Religion's Brett Gerowitz, uh, <clears throat> Jay Bentley, The Foo Fighters' Chris Shiflett, and that, 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 where does it go? Where does it go? Um, up, 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 up. Okay. What is the thing? Anyway, there's a guy with a saxophone in the middle. <laughs> and when you watch the videos back, that's all you can hear. <laughs> and that's so funny to me, right? I don't know who's on the saxophone. I didn't zoom in to look. I'm sure it's somebody very famous. Um, but it's all these famous musicians, all these guitars, they're all playing the decline. And then there's one dude in the middle with a saxophone and he's so loud. He's so loud. And I'm like, bro, I appreciate the effort, but can you, but can you just, can you just, it's like when <laughs> it's like in piano, man, when that guy comes in with the harmonica and you're like, yo, it ain't called harmonica, man. Is Piano Man. Can you just cool it with the harmonica, please? It's a little much. It's a little much. Um, so guy in the middle with... 
whatever. You just play in the crap out of this saxophone. I'm like, okay, I'm into it. I dig it. It's all good. And it's this emotional moment. They say goodbye to the crowd. And then Fletcher. And if you don't know Fletcher, he maybe is the most notorious punk rocker of all time. He is from the band Pennywise, if you know bro him or like for authority, um, you know, all these classic punk rock songs. We sing bro him at the uh, punk rock museum every Tuesday. Whoa, uh, uh, whatever, you know. <laughs> Whoa, oh, oh, oh. They used to play that song every time the Ducks scored in Anaheim, but they don't anymore because of rights, I think. Anyway, mm. Everything's because of right. So anyway, Fletcher, probably out of his mind from hard drugs, decides it's his time. It's his time to make a scene. Now is the time. And his brain thinks, I'm going to smash my guitar. And he smashes the guitar and he throws it into the audience. And it's great, dude. It's punk rock. People are crowd surfing. It's all good. We got mohawks. We got blue hair. We got, it's just, it's punk rock. You smash a guitar, you throw in the audience. It's all good, man. Do it. Do your thing. But then, like a bloodhound, (laughs) he's like sniffing out other people on stage and just starts grabbing guitars from other people and then starts smashing their guitars. Dude is grabbing guitars left and right like it's Costco on a Saturday and he wants some free samples, right? He's going from this sample to this sample. He's taking it. He's smashing these guitars and throwing them into the audience over and over and over. You just watch. He's a maniac. He's out of control. And a couple people, who was it? I think it was Herrera. Who was it? Um, dude, <laughs> they're like cowering in fear. Um, yeah, (laughs) Mike Herrera from MXPX, you can see him like, like you're a white woman at at night in a dark alley and all you have armed on you is your keys, right? Like you put the key through your two fingers and you're like, I hope a murderer doesn't try to murder me tonight. I'm going to stab him with this house key and it's going to do nothing and I'm going to die. That was the look on Mike Herrera's face as Fletcher approached him just with animalistic, crazy eyes just (laughs) coming toward him. And Mike's like, he wants my guitar. Fletcher's like, (laughs) Uh, he tries to run, right? Like Mike tries to like, he holds his guitar as close as he can and he tries to get away. He's trying to get away and Fletcher's not letting him because Fletcher's a big dude. Fletcher's massive, bro. <laughs> like he's so big. Of course, he gets, a, I think it's his bass. This is Mike's bass. Gets a hold of his uh, bass or guitar, I can't remember. And don't crucify me if, if I get it wrong, whatever. Um, he <laughs> And of course he gets a hold of it, his orange, uh, his orange guitar. And what do you think he does? He just smashes the crap out of it and throws it into the audience. The dude is out of control thanks to hard drugs. Uh, This episode of Temperamental is brought to you by hard drugs and why you shouldn't ever do them. (laughs) Because you might die twice and smash people's guitars. So... It's interesting, and I have. There's a couple schools of thought here, right? Like, it's it's people on Reddit are very upset that Fletcher did this because they're like, "Yo, Fletcher's a ass. Like, Fletcher's a like. Why is he doing this? It's super rude. Like, it's one thing to smash your own guitar, but then to go up to legendary musicians and start smashing their stuff. Like, that's different. I'm trying to honestly. I'm trying to think of like what other line of work is this acceptable? Because, like, obviously he didn't get in trouble. It's all fine. Like, it's, they're all musicians. Like, okay, say it's Barbara's last day at in her office. Maybe she works, you know, she, they sell, I don't know, they help sell, they're in sales. <laughs> I can't think of anything a person would sell. Uh, they work, she works in sales. It's Barbara's last day. They're going to they're gonna gather everybody together, and they're going to have a little going away party for Barbara. And, uh... 
they're friends with a couple other people at other companies who, who also sell things. So everybody's just going to gather and they're going to have some cake and they're going to say goodbye to Barbara. And they're all going to just say some nice things. Barbara's been with the company for uh, 45 years. Uh, and uh, we appreciate all of her uh, hard work and we wish her the best. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for all of your uh, contributions to uh, this company where we sell things. So say it's a nice little party for Barbara. And then Kyle <laughs> from the next, from a, two buildings over, just starts taking stuff from everybody and smashing it. And they're like, Kyle, that's my laptop. Ky Kyle, Kyle, stop, Kyle, stop. Kyle, stop, 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 Kyle, that's my keyboard, Kyle, no, no, that's my digital picture frame, where pictures of my newborn nephew rotate every five minutes, don't, uh, no, 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 Kyle, no, <laughs> it's not even his going away party, it's not even Fletcher's going away party, he just happens to be a guest there, and he's just smashing everybody's things. And um, so one part of me is like, dude, stop. Don't do that because it's rude, A. And also, B, maybe some of these historic, you know, these legends in music realized they were going to be a part of something very historic and thought, hey, I want to play like a really special guitar at this at this event. Hey, I'm on I'm on stage with NoFX for the very last time. All the I'm with all my buddies like this is going to be talked about for years to come. I'm going to bring my very special Les Paul um, that my dad gave to me on his deathbed. And with his dying breath, he said, just make sure no one smashes it. Maybe that's the guitar that somebody brought that day. And uh, they, w they just wanted to um, have a special guitar for a special moment. And Fletcher said, absolutely not. I'm going to smash the shit out of it. And there's nothing you can do. Um, so one part of me is like, hey, not cool, bro. Done do that. But then there's that other part of me that's like, um... I've been to a NoFX show and it is chaos. It's chaos. People are crowd surfing constantly. They're getting thrown out constantly. I was standing on stage and there were bottles being thrown at the band. I was even dodging some. And it's like out of love, right? Like they're not like mad at the band. They're just like throwing crap on stage. I'm just like, am I, am I in danger being up here? So I'm seeing how insane these punk rock shows get. Okay. So that other side of me is like, okay, well maybe you should have known that you shouldn't bring uh, anything special to you on stage at this show because it's going to get destroyed. So you should just bring the jankiest, crappiest guitar that you own on stage, do the thing. Nobody's going to hear you anyway. Cause you're going to be drowned out by the sax man. And then if Fletcher takes it, if anybody breaks it, whatever, it gets scratched, it's all good. You're part of the moment. You don't have to worry about your gear. You can go on with the weekend and you continue, you can continue to do hard drugs with everybody. And it's a great time, right? So that's kind of on you. Did you bring a guitar that you like? And then it got smashed by Fletcher, who tends to do this, who maybe shoved F Fat Mike into a drum set two times in Portland recently. Maybe that's on you, right? Because it's very punk rock to do these things, to smash a bunch of guitars. Okay. So I don't know. I'm actually just right in the middle on that, and I haven't made a decision one way or the other. And um, everybody wants to know my opinion because my opinion matters so much. <laughs> no, no one cares what I think. And uh, that's fine. I don't really care what I think either. Um, it's just a crazy thing that happened. Let me check my time. Okay, I only got like five minutes. So I want to tell you guys that Death Battle is back. Death Battle's back. This is a big announcement. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of degenerate behavior and drinking too much and not doing hard drugs, but definitely the, 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 the drinking part, I, uh, the, the team at Death Battle, first of all, Death Battle is a show that's been on for a million years. It started at Screw Attack. It went to Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth shut down. Everybody was out of, out of a job and it was very, very sad. 
Uh, I play a character called Jocelyn the Intern. Uh, She's not really an intern anymore, but I play the character named Jocelyn on Death Battle. And uh, she's animated. It's like one of my first animated characters. And so the team behind Death Battle, you have Chad, you have Ben, you have Sam, like the the whole team. They decided to uh, create a Kickstarter to bring Death Battle back. And they were like, let's ask for $75,000 because it's, you know, it's a lot to ask, but maybe our fans will help us out and we can keep making this great show. Um, <laughs> their Kickstarter made $740,000. That's a house. They made a house. They wanted some money to keep making the show and instead they got a house. Good for them. So the first thing they did after... Well, first they made the new episode. <laughs> they started working, which is great. Um, but then they're like, okay, we should also party a little bit. And that's where I'm like, I'm in. Like, you want to party? I'm in. They said, we're going to throw a rager. We're going to do like a premiere party for the VIP guests, for the backers of this Kickstarter. We're going to show the first episode. We're going to debut it. We're going to do a meet and greet. Then we're going to go to Dave and Buster's and we're going to play games. And we're going to do it. It's going to be amazing. And it was amazing. They flew me to Texas and I got to be a part of the whole event It was so awesome. They brought me on stage. Um, uh, Like the crowd was just electric. Like everyone was so hyped. And um, it just like filled me with energy and like hope for the future. (laughs) It was, dude, it's so hard to be in entertainment. So when you're around fans who just absolutely appreciate your hard work and love what you do, it just like gives you what you need to keep going. So the event was great. The episode was great. It debuted yesterday. Um, it's awesome. It's Omni Man versus uh, I forget what it was, but anyway, just go just go look it up. Um, it is Dragon Ball Z, whatever. Like, go look it up. It's so it's so awesome. But more importantly than that, here's what here's okay. So the first bit of wisdom that I shared. What was the first bit of wisdom? If your friend dies, don't hit him with a baseball bat. That's wisdom nugget number one. Wisdom nugget number two. Here's what I've learned over the years. When there's a trip involved with people that you know and friends, family, whatever, if you're going on a vacation and you're going to be with friends, family, whatever, for like a couple days, let me tell you, the first night is where it's at. The first night's where it's at. The first night is where it's at. The first night is where everybody's so excited to be there. They've been traveling all day. They just want to drink. They just want to see everybody. They're sharing stories. They're doing hugs. It's the whole thing. There's been, there's been a couple trips in my past where I've like flown somewhere, met up with people. And the first night I'm like, guys, I'm just tired. I'm going to go to bed. Like let's, let's rage tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow night. And then I go to bed and I can hear them all partying that first night, but I'm not part of it because I'm already in bed thinking I'm going to party the second night. And then guess what? The second night's never as good as the first night. There's just something about going on a trip that first night, stay up late, do the thing. That's what it's all about. This was very evident when uh, my band went to LA for the first time. We went to LA to play the Whiskey Go-Go and we were all staying in one house. And the first night that we got there, dude, There was a piano. People were playing piano. We were singing. We were drinking. We were standing on the balcony. It was just new. It was fun. And we all just partied. And then every night after that was also fun, but it was all about that first night. And um, I kind of remembered that for the Texas trip. Everybody flew in. We all met up. We all went out to dinner. And uh, you could tell everybody just like wanted to party. Everyone like was ready, like the whole crew. You had like Liam there. You had like, like I said, Sam and Ben and Chad and Chad's wife, April. And like everybody, you could just tell they just wanted to like party and drink and have fun. But all they were like, well, we have this event tomorrow. And so we should probably not stay out too late. And we probably shouldn't drink too much. And we should just like take it easy. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let that happen. Here we go. I mean, I know how to drink. (laughs) So it's not that I was a bad influence and I pushed them toward a night of alcoholism. It's that they were already thinking about going that direction and I just 
just kind of just a little, you know, <laughs> just just a little nudge. I just nudged. I just nudged. And some of that nudging involved just buying three rounds of shots for everyone. And that's, that's just a nudge, right? That's just a nudge. I'm not dying two times. I'm not drinking heroin out of a fire hose. I'm not beating my dead friends with a baseball bat. We're just doing three rounds of shots. And that's fine. <laughs> Dude, everybody got so drunk. Everybody got so drunk. We all wasted. We... Started at Yard House. We had like a couple beers there. We went to another bar. We did like three rounds of shots plus beers. Then we went back to Chad's hotel room. Then we were drinking like straight vodka. (laughs) We were up to like four in the morning. And let me tell you, it was some of the most fun, those fun moments ever. And yeah, everyone is hungover for the event the next day. And I took full responsibility for that. I mean, obviously, once we got on stage and we had the adrenaline from the, the you know, being in front of that awesome electric audience, like we were all just totally fine. But um, <laughs> and my favorite quote was that, well, there's two of them, first of all. So uh, we were driving in the car with Chad and he was like, yeah, we all said we weren't going to drink too much or stay out too late. And then Lisa happened. And then Lisa happened. That's a great, that should be on a t-shirt. I should sell that in my merch store. <laughs> and I felt so bad because look, it, it, like I said, the, it's always the first night. It's always the first night. My friend Danny from Ismahawk, who uh, was the like live action Nightwing and some of the death battles, he flew in a day later. So he just saw all of us like hung over trying to like get to the event. And he was like, man, I can't wait to like, yeah, party with you guys. And like, let's, let's drink a whole bunch. And like, let's go crazy. I can't wait. Oh, I better get some Pedialyte. Like, let's do it. And I was like, yeah, man, look, let's go. Let's party. But it was the second night and we'd all kind of done it, you know? And the vibe was like off a little bit. Like it wasn't, it wasn't the party vibe of the night before. So I had to be like, bro, I'm sorry. Like I'm going to bed early. I'm heading back. Like, uh, I'm sorry. And he's like, what? Like Danny was like, what about all these legendary stories about like Lisa just pounded him back? <laughs> throwing them back with everybody just pounding shots left and right buying shots for the bar like what happened where's that I want to party with that Lisa and I'm like well that Lisa was that's first night Lisa this is sleepy time Lisa who's gonna go back to the hotel and um take a sleeping pill and just (laughs) until her flight tomorrow so I felt kind of bad that Danny didn't get to be a part of that but that's the thing you've got to be there for the first night it's that it's those first night vibes so just Take that into consideration. Say you do like a girl's trip, boy's trip, whatever, to Vegas. Say you go anywhere, you meet up, you're going to do a fishing trip, whatever. Any kind of trip, just remember that first night, that's that's the ticket. Party that first night. Those are going to be the memories you're going to remember forever. So, um, yeah, you know, words of wisdom. Um, don't beat your dead friend with a baseball bat and always party on the first night. Yo, I've lived some life. I'm just passing my advice on to you. Um, anyway, you guys really enjoyed uh, last week's episode, which was the Malcolm in the Middle special. Um, I, I love doing that. I love breaking down like sketches from all that, breaking down jobs that I've done. So uh, thank you guys for watching that. If you if you didn't see it, go back. I, I break down my whole episode, If Boys Were Girls, from Malcolm in the Middle and talk about like behind the scenes stuff. Also, I'm going to be at SplatCon October 19th and 20th. You can meet me and a bunch of old school Nickelodeon stars, my former cast members, uh, like voices from like Invader Zim and Rock Was Modern Life and like, like so many cool people there. So come out, see me, um, take a pic with me and see my band play. We're going to play. Um, and uh, also my, uh, my good buddy Ross uh, has a comic book and he made me one of the characters and you can buy a print of the character and I'll autograph it just for you and you can have that and frame it on your wall and pass it down uh, th- through generations. It can stay in your family, you know, put it in that cedar chest. So generations to come and be like, look, it's Lisa Foyles. It's a Lisa Foyles signed artifact. This is amazing. It could go for like upwards of $5 on eBay (laughs) for anyone um, who remembers what an amazing international child sensation she was. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, his comic book's amazing and my character is so cool. So um, I'll link to that maybe. Um, But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming back every week and watching. I'm thinking about maybe getting a sponsor, right? Like I hate to make you guys listen through uh, like ads and like, you know, sponsor and ad reads and stuff like that. But you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Uh, go to leastfoils.com, buy merch. Love you guys. Have a great, um, week. Bye.
friends present pass and beyond all those weren't with us too long life's the most precious thing you can lose so don't die twice like nikki six and have your drug dealer beat you with a baseball bat whoa whoa pretty sure those are the lyrics 